guys, it's Gretchen and welcome back to my channel. So as you can tell from the title of this video already, I am going to be talking today about the dreaded Pearson bump, aka a keloid. A lot of people think they're getting a keloid, they're not quite sure. So for this video, I thought I would just basically touch on, you know, what is a keloid, how to prevent a keloid, how to heal a keloid, what isn't a keloid, blah, 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 blah. People have varying ideas of what a keloid is. So take what I say with a grain of salt. I am not a professional. Again, just an enthusiast. Take that as you will. If you think something is a keloid or you think maybe it's an infection, please seek help. Do not ask me because I am not a professional. Seek actual professional help, please. So first and foremost, what is a keloid? A keloid is a type of scarring that takes place. They are quite visible and they typically form when a piercing is healing. Basically, a really simple way of describing a keloid is when the body like overheals. I don't know what that was. But basically it's when the body is overhealing and then it forms up this little, little bump that's a kind of scar. That's pretty much what a keloid is. Some people may never see keloids happen to their piercings. Some may see them more often than they would truly like. And that's because um, your genetics kind of contribute to whether or not you get keloids. Some people are just more prone to keloids than others. Because this type of scar is so visible and so noticeable, a lot of people are like, hey, how can I keep these from happening? Or if I do get one, how do I cure it? Unfortunately, there is no 100% method or, or route you can take that will prevent a keloid from forming. However, treatment as well as cleaning can help minimize the visibility of a keloid. Yeah, cleaning is gonna help visibly diminish it, but if a keloid is gonna form, it's gonna form. And unfortunately, this is a case of trial and error. You just have to keep trying things out, hopefully not irritating it anymore, but you just kind of have to mess around with it to figure out what's gonna work for your body. You know, sometimes the salt soak doesn't work for people, but maybe like the paste that people make does and vice versa. Those are just two methods. There are other ones like tea tree oil. Sometimes that works for people, sometimes it doesn't. So if you have the dreaded Pearson bump, how do you take care of it? How do you get rid of it? How do you make sure that that nasty little thing doesn't come back? There are a multitude of ways that you can try and get rid of a keloid or at least diminish the look of it. Some range anywhere from the basic treatment you can do at home to actually going to see a dermatologist, which I did myself with one of my piercing bumps on one of my nostril piercings. I can't remember which one it was now. I wanna say it was this one, but I can't remember. But I went to a dermatologist because that bump just would not go away. And luckily with treatment, it was able to clear up. So what are some various methods you can take to get rid of the piercing bump? The first thing you can do is make sure you're still cleaning the site. Don't give up on cleaning the site, especially if it's a newer piercing. Keep cleaning it, keep using your you know, if you're using your H2 Ocean or an antimicrobial soap, I will leave links to both that I recommend in the description below. There's one antimicrobial soap that I love and swear by. And then of course, H2 Ocean, which is the little aerosol spray can of salt solution. You can do your own saline and salt soak. Just make sure that you get the measurements correct. The typical allotment for that is like one fourth of a teaspoon salt to eight ounces of water. You really do not wanna make it super strong because then otherwise it irritates the site and can almost make things worse. Another thing you can do is change your jewelry. Now this is what I often do because my body doesn't react to the standard jewelry that piercers use, which is usually surgical steel. My body just does not react to that. It deals so much better with titanium and so that's why oftentimes I change out my jewelry a little sooner than you probably should because I just find that my body appreciates that better. And then bleeding stops and then crusty stop and then the potential for bumps kind of diminishes. So maybe you've got a metal allergy and you need to change out the jewelry because your body's not happy with it. So then two other things that you could do, this is where you need a dermatologist. I had one of these done. One thing you can get done is cryotherapy. Basically, it freezes the bump. It makes it less visible, it can get rid of it. It's kind of hit or miss, trial and error, but basically they'll just get to the site and freeze it. The other thing you can do are corticosteroids. I said that really fast.
guess, and I'm not sure I said it correctly, but corticosteroids. What this does is it reduces inflammation. That's the thing that I had done. I went in to a dermatologist and I had like a bump on my arm. Didn't even go in for the keloid. Had a bump on my arm and I just wanted them to like take care of it or at least like flatten it out. And so they, they shot that with corticosteroid. And while they were doing that, I was like, hey, I have this bump on the side of my nose. Is there any way we could maybe possibly try that on this? To which they did. The bump was gone in 48 hours. It was the most miraculous thing I've ever seen, which isn't saying much, but whatever. So those are other methods. They're a little bit more expensive. They're not the ones that you can just easily do at home, but they work. And I mean, it, it doesn't just like reduce the visibility of it. It gets rid of it. At least it did for me. And then another thing you can use at home is tea tree oil. However, I cannot stress it enough. Make sure you dilute the tea tree oil. Do not just take a little bottle of tea tree oil, put like it on a Q-tip and then shove it on the site. You need to dilute it because tea tree oil can be pretty abrasive. And once again, you don't want to irritate the site any more than it already is. So if you do go tea tree oil route, please dilute it first. So now that we know what a keloid is, how you can potentially prevent it, and how you can possibly heal it, what isn't a keloid? One thing to keep in mind, keloids are typically not painful. If it's painful, if it's hot, if it's oozing, if it bleeds, and if it just hurts, that's an infection. That's not a keloid. Keloids really do not hurt. They're just a scar, like any other type of scar. Whereas an infection is gonna have that pain, it's gonna swell, it's gonna kinda be hot to the touch, it's gonna ooze, it's gonna bleed. I really like that word, ooze, I don't know why. But that's an infection, that's not a keloid. I will post two pictures here, one of an infection that I've had and one of a keloid that I've had, so you can see the difference. A keloid is a scar. An infection is an infection. They're two very different things, so please try not to get them confused. If it hurts, it's an infection. If it doesn't hurt and it's just obnoxious, most likely a keloid. Again, unfortunately, there's no surefire way to prevent a keloid, but please always make sure that you are maintaining cleanliness with your piercings because that can at least lessen the chance of a keloid forming. Don't mess with them. Don't try and pick them on your own. Oh my God. I have heard horror stories of people pick in their keloids. And as someone who didn't know what a keloid was when she got her first nostril piercing and a bump formed, I will admit, I picked at it. But then that's when it does hurt. So the only time a keloid hurts is if you're messing with it like that. So just don't. But hopefully these are some helpful tips on what a keloid is, what to expect with a keloid, how you could possibly get rid of one. If you have any other tips or tricks, leave them in the comments below. These are just ones that I found most helpful, especially the corticosteroids. But again, that's a more expensive route, whereas doing like your own salt soak or doing h lotion or using a microbe of soap or tea tree oil is a little less expensive. But if you're desperate, I recommend going to your dermatologist and asking for assistance. But that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big ol' thumbs up. Go on down there and hit that subscribe button, wherever it may be, because I don't know. Even though I do, this is just my shtick now. Also hit that notification bell in case you wanna know when I upload and in case YouTube wants to let you know when I upload because I would really appreciate it. And until next time, bye guys.